Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Queensborough Hall. This is, as you know, a public hearing on land use that we hold on a quasi-monthly basis. We have one item on the agenda. I understand, I understand that the item has already been read. Oh, so. Yes. Yule up item number 200143MMY, the applicant, New York City Department of Correction, Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice, and New York City Council Speaker, Corey Johnson. The affected community board number one. Applicant, please take the stand. Good morning. So they're going to ask that you come up to the mic and speak okay. into the mic because this is a public hearing and this is for the official record, sure. but thank you very much. And uh, we'll ask that you identify yourself, obviously, just like we did at the land use hearing uh, back in June. Uh, so welcome back to Borough Hall. Thank you. Uh, and I'll ask that I see that you're, you're joined by a few colleagues. Mm -hmm. If they are supplementing uh, the presentation, if they'll also join you at the mic. Uh, great. My colleagues are here to answer any questions. So I think that they can to respond to. Uh, good morning, I'm Dana Kaplan with the New York City Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice. Thanks for having us today. So briefly, we are uh, just gonna talk about the purpose of closing the jails on Rikers Island and some of the context for what brought us to this moment, uh, what the specific ULERP application entails, and then what comes next. So the context of this ULERP is the city's commitment to close the jails on Rikers Island. There was a, a long process that brought us to this point, but uh, essentially we determined uh, both through the policy considerations of the administration and certainly supported by uh, a number of independent stakeholders, community organizations, justice impacted individuals, the independent Lippman Commission appointed by then speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, that our criminal justice reform goals uh, would not be achieved in the jails on Rikers Island. So essentially there's both the problem of the facilities themselves and the distance uh, of Rikers Island uh, to both public transportation, the courthouses and the ability for family members, attorneys, service providers to access the facilities. So the facilities themselves are not up to modern standards in terms of the design, the philosophy that represents our reform goals. Uh, the location can lead to delays in resolving cases, uh, potentially uh, negatively impacting people's uh, ability to move uh, efficiently through the system. And visiting loved ones is difficult, even prohibitive which undermines family ties, uh, connections to service providers, which we know are important in terms of ensuring that if people come into contact to jail, that they don't recidivate upon release. The goals of a new, smaller, borough-based detention system is humane facilities designed to improve health, educational, and social outcomes, greater access to families, social services, and community service providers, better lines of sight and safety with smaller housing units and better programming space, which is better for both people in detention, but also better for facility staff, to have more normative environments uh, and to support our efforts to reduce violence and improve safety with, uh, again, smaller units and increased access to programming, recreation, education. So this plan, uh, the city's plan to close the jails on Rikers Island was advanced when the city council voted on October 17th of 2019 to permanently close the jails on Rikers Island and replace them with a smaller, safer, and more fair borough-based jail system. Uh, the plan that was approved entails housing for a total of 3,300 individuals. That requires 3,545 beds. Um, and I should just say that this is an incredible capacity reduction, which is part of what have been the historic declines in New York City's jail population, as we have seen uh, continued reductions in crime and improved public safety. We are uh, moving ahead with four borough-based sites, um, in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. And again, a little bit of context 
In 2019, New York City had 11 active jails. So again, we're talking about a very significant reduction in the footprint of our criminal justice system, which is part of our overall efforts to reform and improve the delivery of justice in New York City. The purpose of this specific ULERP application is to designate Rikers Island a public place to ensure that future development on the site will be solely for the public benefit. Uh, specifically, it um, outlines that Rikers Island can no longer be used for incarceration of individuals after December 31st, 2026, which is when the city system of four new borough-based facilities will be completed. So that time frame of 2026 is essentially tied to the time frame by which we will have the new uh, facilities in place and we can permanently close the jails on Rikers Island. Uh, some facts just uh, for context. So Rikers Island lies within the borough of the Bronx but is under the jurisdiction of Queens Community District 1. This uh, application for a city map change is, uh, as was said in the beginning, the New York City Department of Correction and the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice, but also in partnership with New York City Council Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, and what the ULERP application covers is a change to the city map for the whole of Rikers Island to become a public place. And that is uh, the current zoning. I should say that the city map change application to become a public place does not cover the bridge. There are no other actions, uses, or development proposed as part of this ULERP application. So just to be very, very clear, this application does not propose what the new use or uses will be for Rikers Island, and uh, any new use would require a separate review process. Uh, we are committed to having a participatory community engagement process that is part of uh, determining what will be the future uses of Rikers Island that is completely separate and apart from this ULERP application. But important just to note that we have committed that there will be a public engagement process, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, and we can answer questions on that. But I just want to underscore that this ULERP itself only prohibits the detention or incarceration of individuals and mandates that Rikers Island is a public place. It does not speak to what the future uses will be. And then uh, as it relates to the upcoming planning process, so of course this is the timeline for the ULERP application itself. Uh, we are obviously currently in the borough president review period. It will move to the city planning commission within a vote from the council. Uh, as it relates to the separate participatory planning process, it will be uh, led by the one NYC team uh, in the mayor's office. Uh, the mayor will be signing an executive order towards that end in the near future. And what we have committed is that the planning process will engage uh, the stakeholders that we know are very, very central to this. That includes community boards, representation from both Queens and the Bronx, uh, justice impacted individuals, and a number of community organizations that we know have a deep stake uh, in, um, in chiming in on what is the future uses of the so again. That is a separate process that we are committed to advancing within this administration. This ULERP application itself is important in just underscoring the fundamental commitment to make sure that Rikers Island will never be used for jails again. And we are happy to answer any questions. What would the... Uh, no, oh, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, if you'd like to deliver testimony Thank you, Ms. Kaplan, for that presentation. A couple of questions. Um, so you meant, first of all, can we get a copy of this deck? Yes. Okay. Um, you mentioned that so the city map does not cover the bridge. So what happens to the bridge? Do you want to? I'm going to invite the Department of City Planning. But I think essentially nothing happens <laughs> with the bridge at this point. It's, uh, there, there's no change to the bridge. So regardless of what public use uh, would take place on Rikers Island, the bridge will stay intact and still be utilized? 
Yes. And so, and to be clear, through 2026, of course, you know, there will continue to be um, the current uses on the island. Uh, I, I believe that the any uh, future determinations about the bridge, which would be outside of this land use process, would be something that we would want to consider in conjunction with whatever was determined was the appropriate best future use of the island. So I think the questions around what the, should the access points be or the right transportation, I think would be uh, considered in conjunction with the consideration of what you know is the best use for the island overall. Again, not part of this ULERP itself. So this, this ULERP doesn't address the bridge. And so this ULERP in particular is specifically banning a particular use uh, of space. Is there, are there other examples of that citywide where we can just look at how that's been done? Taylor, do you want to come up? And this is Taylor with the Department of City Planning. Taylor, if you'll kindly uh, say your first and last name to the mic. Sure. Um, hi, Taylor Wolfson with the Department of City Planning. Uh, the public place designation actually has a very broad kind of set of uses that it um, and so there are various examples of public place designations throughout the city, but um, in keeping with that kind of broad sense, it's very unique depending on the site. So other examples of public place designations include portions of Battery Park City as well as Lincoln Center. And I suppose Queensboro Hall? Yes. In a public space? And so you said, this might be going back to you, Ms. Kaplan, so you said any new use, uh, once it's, if this were to move forward as, as you are hoping, uh, and it turns into a public space or public place, um, any particular use would be determined through a community or, or public engagement and participatory process. Is there any sense of what that would look like? Uh, so, the I I think you know the this is something that the mayor has been working with the council on. So uh, I think that there is um, some joint orientation towards the importance of having a participatory planning process. I think the exact details are being refined, and again, some of that will be um, outlined in the executive order. But essentially, there will be. Uh, an advisory board. Um, there will be public meetings and forums on this, and what we've indicated uh, are the uh, key stakeholders include uh, Community Board One in Queens, uh, the Bronx, who we know, again, as I indicated, that it is in the borough of the Bronx, but under the jurisdiction of uh, the Queens Community Board, so we think that it's very important to engage uh, both boroughs and uh, justice impacted individuals and organizations who uh, have been um, you know, obviously a strong part of uh, talking about the importance of uh, closing the jails on Rikers Island but also honoring the history of it. And I understand that this application specifically for public, uh, for public place mm -hmm. designation on Rikers, um, but you started your presentation with the Rikers jail plan because even though that's not part of the ULERP application in front of us, uh, it's certainly closely tied. Um, is there, I, I, you were going through the slides very quickly, what is the project, what is the current population that uh, we're dealing with right now on Rikers? Because uh, I know the numbers are changing by the day. Yeah. Probably. I think it is um, in the, uh, Tim and DOC might have the latest numbers. It's uh, we're just it's over 5,500. 500. Yeah. Oh, or yeah. so uh, just over 5,500, and just some context for that is in the 1990s, there was uh, over 20,000 people in Rikers Island in the city's jails, so that was really the peak of, uh, of incarceration and detention in New York City. When the mayor took office, there was just over 11,000, and so what we've seen is a very significant reduction in the number of people in detention on a given day, and that's driven by a number of factors. Uh, obviously, most recently, there's been state legislative reforms that have made an impact on that, but this is a trend that we've been seeing for years now, driven by increased use of pretrial diversion, 
reduced arrests, uh, lower crime rates, uh, changing practices of judges, district attorneys that are more utilizing um, evidence-based alternatives to incarceration and detention, which we know have, in many ways, a, a better impact on public safety um, and have been a, a focus of this administration. So the population of Rikers when the mayor came in January 2014 was 11,000? Over 11,000. Over 11,000. And what was it about this time last year? 32%. 32% higher. 32% higher. <laughs> About 7,000, yeah. So if if breakfast were to be closed today, hypothetically, and the rural based jails were built, done, and ready to go, uh, how many would be coming to Queens as of today? So uh, I d do, do you not offhand know the number of individuals that are from Queens? Is that the question? Yes. I don't. The Queens facility will hold. Sir, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, sure. sure. Oh, no. Tim Farrell with the Department of Correction. So uh, the Queens facility is designed, it's going to be a, a female facility and a male facility. So we will house all the female offenders in the Queens facility, regardless of borough of residence. We will prioritize the remaining population, which is about 600, 650 beds will be set aside for the male population and those will be predominantly for those with a Queens borough of residence. And then, I'm sorry, uh, and then the women, the female population? That, that's the remaining, about 200, 250. And when we were, and this goes back to Ms. Kaplan, um, when we were talking last time, So uh, there will be uh, outdoor recreation space both within all of the housing units themselves as well as shared recreation space, both outdoor and indoor recreation space for the facility. How much space? Yeah, I we're average. So we're in the middle of the design phase of uh, getting ready to, uh, the plans to go out for our Q and RFP. So part of that we're averaging, we're looking at somewhere around between 700 and 900 square feet of outdoor recreation space for every housing unit. How many housing units? Um, it, depending on the facility, we're averaging somewhere around 30 housing units. There'll also be a uh, common gymnasium, which would be a standard size gymnasium. Uh, that you see in a, uh, something you'd see in a high school, uh, full, full basketball court with exercise, uh, rooms surrounding the perimeter, kind of a walking track around the perimeter as well. Indoor space? That would be indoors. And then depending on how the uh, designs come back, since this is design build, we're looking for creativity from the design team that is going to be bidding on this. So we're looking for whatever other outdoor space can be incorporated into it, depending on the infrastructure and the envelope that we have to work with.
feed off of whatever power source is currently going through the grid. Yes. These will be state-of-the-art HVAC climate control facilities, sealed, uh, air conditioning, uh, very modern, very um, sufficient and green. Uh, humane. Yes, humane. Online, but on records. Correct. It will be humane. Yes. Can we go back to the participation? Because we're talking about public space and going back to the public application of the bus. Um, and you'll understand that there is trepidation about what that public participation public looks like. Because there were some concerns about how public participation and engagement was handled over the past year with regard to the rural based jail. And so we're coming into this with a little less faith, unfortunately. Um, in a process uh, that is forthcoming. Um, and so it almost feels like it's kind of a blank check. But once we determine this to be a public place, a public space, um, it's hard to just give that faith and say, it will be used for public space without definitively outlining what that public participation and engagement so besides the stakeholders that you mentioned, is there a, is there a more definitive timeline um, similar to the Google process, or, or is it going to be a similar process to other places in the city that have similar spaces like Battery Park City as well? And what is that process going to be? So one, I just uh, have to actually uh, say respectfully, we have been committed to community and public engagement throughout this process. Oh, no, that I and don't no, and, and I want to just, I, I think it's important for us to share details of that in terms of what's happened to date. I understand the importance of that question. And so I don't, none of us take that lightly at all. And, and it's so, not to question the intent by no means in, in I, shape or form. There is no question mm -hmm. about the intent, certainly by the mayor's leadership, by the city council's leadership, in terms of the commitment to a more humane system mm -hmm. and a better system. That is without question. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm, I trust that you would not disagree with concerns, because I've heard them, mm -hmm. and I know that you've heard them, concerns about the public process over the past year. This is not an indictment of your intent at all. I, I, not only have we heard concerns, but I think that the community engagement that we've done over the last year and a half has the intention has been to be very responsive to concerns. And so, you know, we have had working groups focused on design, culture change, uh, reducing the jail population. We have neighborhood advisory councils uh, in all four of the boroughs. We've done countless public meetings, focus groups with formerly incarcerated individuals, staff, service providers. A number of the things that you saw were uh, changed in the final year. And, for instance, things such as if there being a centralization of the women's facility in one site were in response to uh, the feedback that we received from the public. Certainly as it relates to the Queen site in particular, I think that we took very, very seriously the concerns that we heard around height and density and the smaller size of the facility. And all of those are things that are reflected in the final ULERP application. There's a points of agreement document that we work with the council on that uh, outlines what our continued commitment and engagement is, uh, both in terms of close to $400 million in investments, both at the uh, citywide and neighborhood level, as well as our commitment to continuing to engage with neighborhoods in the community on design and concerns around neighborhood integration and all of those things. And so I don't take seriously the concerns that we you know, hear from neighborhoods and community. We've never, uh, I, I don't, you know, not, and I, we've never dismissed them. And I think that we will continue to try to work on that as it relates to the borough facility plan. Um, and that's something that we're committed to. As it relates to the consideration of future uses of Rikers Island, you know, one of the things that we wanted to make sure was that this ULERP application be very specific to prohibiting the use of detention. And this was something that we heard was important to 
uh, organizations and neighborhoods that there be something binding within this administration that makes sure that after this mayor leaves office, after this city council leaves office, and certainly I think that that was the interest of uh, you know, Speaker Johnson in, in working with us on this ULERP is because we heard the uh, request and the, the importance of making sure that there was a separate land use process that ensured that whatever happens with the borough facilities, which are obviously important and essential to our ability to close Rikers Island, that we could give a binding commitment now that there will not be use of detention no matter what happens in 2026. And so that is the purpose of this. As it relates to any future uses of the island, uh, we are committed to doing public engagement on that. We welcome the different, rec different uh, recommendations and suggestions as to what is the best way to ensure stakeholder voices are, uh, are heard, who are the different constituent groups beyond those that we've outlined that should be part of this process. Uh, you know, I think we want to make sure that we do as good a job as possible in, in, in hearing all voices and that the decisions about what happens on Rikers Island are grounded and informed by that input. And of course, as I said in the beginning, there will be a separate review process uh, that, you know, that will ultimately allow whatever it is that we recommend or comes out of that planning process. And so this will not, will not allow, this Euler doesn't allow us to go forward with any new uses. This allows us to, Simply or basically ban. this mandates that it bans the use of detention, but we will have to go through separate public reviews, and so that's something that I think uh, is an important thing to highlight. This public place um, designation, and I don't know, maybe uh, our colleagues in government can specify, what are some examples of that currently in the city? Do you want to add? Um, I think the, 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 there are a number of examples throughout the city, but as I mentioned, they're very broad. And so, in Borough Hall, for instance, um, Parts of Battery Park City, Lincoln Center. Is there something else in particular that you were? Um, oh, the, so perhaps I wasn't clear in my prior question. My prior question earlier yeah. uh, was, are there examples of where we have uh, banned certain usage of space? Like, So this application is twofold, as you mentioned. One is banning new jails, which there is little opposition to, certainly in the borough hall, uh, given the prior recommendation on the borough based jail. However, uh, the, the public place that A two-part question. One, what are some examples of where we have banned uh, certain usage uh, in public public space? And then two, what are some examples of public place designation uh, citywide? Sure. I think that we can get back to you with some specific, some more specifics. Off the top of my head, there are examples where um, the public place has not allowed certain uses. So. so not in Queens, but in Gowanus, there's an example of a, of a public place um, where, <coughs> going back a few decades, but uh, they, th there was a public place um, designation that didn't allow for um, certain uses of, I believe it was housing. But let, let us get back to you and uh, we can get specifics to you, but there are a number of public place designations throughout the city that had some sort of usage ban? Not necessarily, because public place is so broad, but I can at least think of one that, that we could point to that could show an example. But I think the, the greater purpose of public place is that it requires that the area be used as a for a public purpose. And so even though ban, you know not allowing a certain use is like one example of that, there are um, other types of public places that are, that's not the intention of it. So it, it's very broad in terms of what the applicability of a public place can be. And that's precisely the, uh, the pause here, which is that because it's so broad, um, it feels like a blank check. Well, I would say that um, any sort of process that happens in the future, so whatever <clears throat> the future you know, uses or ideas for the island, 
there will have to be some sort of process that takes place and um, even though this public place doesn't affect the, the, the current zoning, any, if there are any sort of changes in terms of what you know, the future of Rikers Island is that, for instance, requires changes to, um, to the zoning, that would, again, require some sort of work. So there are a lot of um, opportunities for a, a public review process in the future and specifically for work, depending on what the outcome of the engagement process is. Is there any, anybody else who might have examples of, uh, just off the top of our head, similar public place designations in the city. So you said Battery Park City? Yes, portion of Battery Park City, Lincoln Center. And is that the Park. outdoor area that you're talking about? Yes. Okay, so that has the public place designation. Portions. Portions, okay. Borough Hall is considered a public place, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes, there are um, specific processes for creating parklands um, that are, I believe, um, that a lot of them go through the state. So there may, so it, I think it'll be very specific to whatever the, the future uses. But um, it it may end up, you know, Rikers Island is very large, and so we you know anticipate that there could be a lot of different uses, and so depending on what those uses are, it may involve, you know, ULERP, it may involve state processes, but it's hard to, t to tell right now since we don't have any specifics. You mean like a, a massing action is not map that's part of I think that there, that could be a possibility, but again, it's hard to know without the specifics. Uh, and, and just one more general question. Um, in terms of the design of the borough based jail, Sure, so yes, we have already begun the process to um, design the facilities and prepare the RFQs and the RFPs for issuance. Um, we don't have a date of when they'll actually be issued, but they are forthcoming and they are on schedule, so we will meet our 2026 deadline. And to what extent are they budgeted? I mean, I, can't, I don't imagine the entire budget for Pearl Bay Scale is in place. I imagine it's the phases that we would So there's $8.7 in the capital budget for the full project. So the, the full 8.7 is identified in the budget? Correct. Uh, and last question. Earlier you mentioned there's been an executive order to create the one New York City. Yes. Is that referring to the reuse of Rikers? That, that is the as it relates to the planning process for the future of Rikers Island. Okay. Yes. So has that executive order been issued? No, but it will be uh, very soon, and it will basically outline and mandate what the public plan, public engagement uh, plan is to determine the future use of Rikers Island. So very soon? Soon. <laughs> Soon. When this application was drafted, the part about banning particular usage, I mean, Rikers Island, it's, it's just been you know, amazing. about environmental concerns there, to say the least, notwithstanding the, the management, that's a different issue uh, that we will be there. But the inherent issues on, on that land, in that space, um, it's very concerning what could be used as a public, public place. Uh, it's not suitable for public place right now as it stands. Are there plans for environmental assessments? Um, yeah, are, are all of those elements already accounted for or planned for? I, 
I would hate to see a public park there as it stands now. It's, it's, there are inherent issues. So I think all of this would be part of the, the planning for, process. yes, the process uh, in terms of you know what happens on the island moving forward. the uh, article in Cranes today, so I can't speak on it. to restricting building on Rikers Island to non-detention facilities. I have several reasons. Number one, why is this even necessary other than as part of a political move to make the Rikers Island uh, project move forward? It's not necessary to ban uh, detention facilities on Rikers Island. The city's plan to build local jails requires that they get the population, the city jail population down to 3,600, 3,300 inmates. Population now is about 5,500. That means they have to get down 2,200 additional inmates by 2026. In order to get it down, they either have to reduce crime, or release defendants charged with serious crimes and with serious criminal records into the general population. The new bail laws that were passed were designed to reduce the population on Rikers by preventing judges from setting bail on many crimes, including burglary, stalking, menacing, robbery, all misdemeanors, and almost 400 other crimes. Those laws went into effect on January 1st, but judges started reducing prisoners from Rikers much earlier than that. And after decades of successfully reducing crime, crime in New York City is not going down, it's on the rise. According to the latest NYPD, NYPD statistics, car thefts are up 67% in, in New York City. Shootings are up 21%. Shooting victims are up 30%. Car th robberies are up 32%. Burglaries are up 15%. Transit crime is up 21%. What if the city ultimately builds 3,600 jail cells and we find that we need to house 5,000 inmates? What do we do? They either have to expand the jails that they're currently building in the four, the four borough-based jails, or they have to find additional sites in New York City to build those jails. What is the rush to do this? Now, one of the things that was said before was that we're going to do this because we want to make sure that those, that Rikers is not used for jail facilities, no matter what happens in 2026. That is irresponsible. There's no need to pass this zoning change other than political posturing. I've been opposed to the, the Rikers plan since it first started coming about. Uh, I've always felt, and a lot of people feel, that the best way to improve Rikers is to rebuild Rikers Island on Rikers Island. You could build a world-class jail facility on Rikers Island a lot faster than 2026, a lot cheaper than the city is planning to do. 90% of the goals envisioned in the presentation that was made could be achieved by building better, more efficient, more stable, more modern, more uh, prisoner-friendly jails on Rikers Island rather than having to disrupt neighborhoods all over the city. They talk about uh, community involvement. Well, the, the, the community board that the jail is going to be built in voted almost unanimously not to have, not to approve the jail in Kew Gardens. And who knows what our fiscal situation is going to be in 2026, or 2024, or 2022. Will we be able to spend $8.7 billion for jails? The carrying charges on that are going to be almost a billion dollars a year that the city is going to be spending to build those new jails. There's no need to do this. There's no need to, to restrict Rikers Island to non-detention facilities. 
You are leaving future generations of New Yorkers few options if things go wrong. You are removing the most logical, efficient, and expansive option, the rebuilding of a world-class facility on Rikers Island from the list of choices. You are burdening future generations with enormous debt when jails, when there are so many other needs in the city, schools, infrastructure, NYCHA, and the homeless. For what? There are other options that the city refuses to explore. Don't do this. It is not necessary. This is a flawed plan. The option should be kept to build jails on Rikers Island if it becomes necessary. I ask that this uh, proposal be opposed. Thank you, Mr. Quinn, for okay. delivering your testimony in person. Ms. Kaplan, I just have one follow-up question, if you don't mind. I see that the Community Board Plan voted on this uh, the other day. We voted 36 in favor. There's one abstention. Do we know the reason for the abstention? Uh, I believe the abstention is a person who uh, works for the city and so had a conflict on this uh, voting on this particular issue. So, in other words, uh, it was near unanimously in favor of the proposal. Correct. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, with no other items on the agenda, the hearing is now closed. The item is, up, is closed and the hearing is now closed. The next scheduled public hearing will be February 20th, 2020. Thank you very much.